The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 12th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life Life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, let those fingers do the walking. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, and in our tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous, fantastic Masters Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow up 250 points. That's uh, nearly 1% to the upside. Leading the charge percentage-wise would be the semis up one and four tenths percent. The uh, trainees are up just over one percent. Uh, S and P's up 17 points. Nasdaq up 25. Mean and green across the board. Spot volatility index down uh, about six percent or 75 cents. Trade down to 12.27. Gold slightly green up a buck 80. Silver's up 11 pennies. Lights we crude up 60. Cents out there. Booking Holdings leading the charge dollar wise. That's 22 buckaroonies. Pioneer Natural Resources up 16. Uh, Disney up 12. That's a big move. Uh, that's 10% move today. Contra Resources up 11, 10% as well. To the downside, it's Anthem Inc. The uh, health sector, XLV, is the uh, only sector. Well, I take that back. The utility sector trading down as well, just slightly. Netflix is off 14 bucks or 4%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals down 11. Molina Healthcare down. Down 10. So, you know, we could take a look at many things. Of course, we're going to take a look at what you want to look at. The first request really coming in asking if we could take a look at the the indices and the sectors and the whole shebang out here. Let's start with, since it's the end of the week, let's just kind of walk through this methodically. Let's walk through this by taking a look at the weekly chart for the ES Mini. What do we know? And there's nothing bearish about this. This would tell us at this stage of the game, there's no topping signal, no topping pattern. In fact, it was the last week when the ES Mini closed above the shooting star candle from the week of March 22nd, 2019. Old resistance, not that that was really old, but resistance becomes support. Uh, this would say the weekly chart again saying that we go back to the all-time highs and then some out there. Nothing bullish on the weekly time frame chart. Let's check in on the daily time frame chart. The daily time frame chart is going to show you that the daily market profile 2900 prices above that 2910. You can see an A to B equals CD pattern out here. 2929 is its price projection. You can see that we are in or it is in wave number six. That's letter F on my screen. We're above the TD setup nine count that occurred two days ago. That count with regard to a topping pattern is gone. It's out the window. Once you exceed either days 8, 9, or 10, whichever is the highest of those three, uh, then you're not using that as a tool to identify. If anything, this was just a little bit of a hiccup after that ninth count out there. Not really much of a sideways move. So what does this say? The daily chart for the ES Mini, no topping pattern in place. Price wants to move higher. Whether it's 29.29 or 29.66, or quite frankly, it could even be 3,015. That we don't know. We'll just have to take things one day at a time. 
there's anything to be concerned with that's not really to be concerned. It would be maybe if Monday doesn't make a higher high, Tuesday could be could be wave number seven, letter G on the screen. We'll just have to look at what's going on then. If we look at the NQ, uh, and we're just going to look at right now, just look at the weekly and the daily time frame charts just to avoid the noise, so to speak. On the weekly time frame chart here for the NQ, let me actually just kind of clean this up just a tad. This was just showing some of the other nine counts out there. Well, the weekly chart nine count, that has vanished. It vanished as well to close last week. Uh, the NQ is just uh, moving its way on up to its all-time high out here. That's what the weekly time frame chart is saying to you and I. As far as wave counts, uh, it's only in the third wave, letter number C, on a weekly time frame. If we take a look at the daily for the NQ, what do we know? Price is driving higher, doing it with less relative energy out here. And we know that just simply because my tool draws that pattern in. Uh, and, uh, and today could be, yesterday was count number nine, today's high could be a double topping signal um, with it being a higher high than it was yesterday. So that would be the end of the TD setup nine count out there. Uh, I'm not saying that this is going to form a top, but we do want to pay attention because the market will communicate to you and I, the bulls and bears have one role to play on a chart, and that's to simply help us identify what buyers and sellers are doing. Right now, we just simply know the pattern, which is that price is being stretched without the appropriate strength behind it. It is in wave number four. The uh, A to B equals CD pattern that is set up here says a move to 78.55. If that's going to happen, we will see these other patterns fail. But it is the industry at this stage here to be paying attention to come Sunday, Monday out there, as well as fun day. If we go take a look at the Dow and we look at the Dow equity futures contract on a weekly time frame, this is a signal that says we haven't made a higher high. Kind of interesting. In fact, the Dow equity futures contract right now is trading exactly where it opened up on Sunday evening. 26,395 is the number out here. So that is somewhat perplexing. Makes you say, hmm, something to think about. At this stage, a doji candle, if this is how the week were to end, really only means anything at resistance. I know others will tell you something else out there. I'll let them tell you what they want. I will share with you what I know, and that is that at this stage, we're really not at resistance. So the doji candle just means that the market is a little bit tired. Doesn't mean that it's topped. However, I will say, regardless of whether it was a doji or not, not taking out last week's high is always something to think about. Now let's go see what the daily time frame chart is communicating to you and I. Is there anything to think about here? Well, there is. And what there is here to think about is uh, we can see the, uh, the butterfly cell pattern not a three drive to a top pattern, but a butterfly cell pattern that formed uh, four or five days ago uh, when that other doji was formed out there. Uh, we can see that the key level, believe it or not, that uh, price, the YM, would need to overcome is Stevie's little dashed blue line. And that's the high from April 8th. And that high is 26,412. So the Dow is saying not so fast. The daily chart for the NQ says be keep an eye on Sunday, Monday's price action, which you and I will do. But we'll be right back. We'll take a look at the Russell 2000, TAS profiles, and the whole nine yards. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is up 252. We're taking a look at the uh, markets. We're doing that by looking at the weekly and the daily time frame for the four equity futures contracts. We've been through three of them. The ES Mini, the clear message from it is it wants higher price, wants to get back to the all-time highs, and then some. The NQ says it wants to move higher, but says watch Sunday, Monday. Uh, and see what the outcome there is, because there could be a top, depending on the candle that it would form. Uh, the Dow says, uh, okay, um, you know, it's even though it's up 1%, 250 points, it's still saying not so fast out there. Let's go see what the message of the Russell 2000 is. Let's go take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here. Uh, what do we know about it? Um, hey, it's above last week's high. That's bullish. Its resistance zone was set up by that Tommy DeMarc set up nine count. That was from the week of, uh, what week was it? Um, I'm going to tell you what week it was. It was uh, March 1st, 2009. The high out there is what you'd be watching, 1603.60. That's a level that if we're taken out, says it wants higher price. Could even be an A to B equal CD to the upside on a weekly time frame chart out there. But we won't go there until that happens. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, out here, the daily time frame chart shows us what? It shows us that price is sitting right now at a resistance point for it. That was established by the trading session. Uh, the date was April the 8th. That high is critical. High being 1588.30. We're 1589.30, so we're one point above that. A close above the 1588.30 level uh, would be bullish and say that price wants higher price. So the Russell 2000 testing resistance on a daily basis out here, the equity futures contract, that is the number that I would be watching there. Now, the request was also to take a look at market profiles. Let's do it this way, Jay. Um, here are the, uh, let me let me do this. Uh, well, here are the four different time frames out here. When I say four different time frames, I'm looking at the daily in the upper left, the weekly in the upper right, the uh, monthly in the lower left, and the mm, quarterly in the lower right out here. And so those are your profile levels for each of those time frames. In summary, price above the top of the daily, above the top of the weekly. Uh, this is the ES mini above the top of the monthly and above the top of the quarterly. What say you? What does this say? 
says your buffer resistance. So the ES mini with regard to market profiles, with regard to other tools that you and I looked at, when we looked at the daily and the weekly chart, the message here is queer, is queer. No, it's clear and unequivocal. However, if you take a look at the daily time frame chart and you just look at a rising trend line, that rising trend line just beginning from the high of March 4th, then the high of March 21st, price in essence, and there would be your three drive to a top pattern out here, prices hit it. It's just pretty clear. It's just pretty simple. So, in other words, you need to see some follow through, not you, but the ES Mini, if I'm referring, if I'm talking to it, needs to see follow through come Monday out there. Should there be a bearish reversal signal there, along with the NQ, um, then uh, then there's a, then there's a topping signal that would be in play. I'm not here to tell you the future. I'm here to tell you what's going on right now. I'd love to tell you the future. Uh, the future is I'm going to have a tasty meal tonight watching Sergio Mendez. We'll probably drink a little bit too much sake beforehand, but that never hurt anyone. And in a great weekend of golf, it, it sounds like a pretty good uh, uh, pretty good formula for me. And anyway, in any event, we're talking about the formula here with regard to the equity futures contracts. Let's go take a look at what is the message for the NQ. We go take a look at the NQ. Here's what we're going to see. The daily time frame out here is got us right at the top of the box, slightly above it. That top is 76.33. We're at 76.42. Uh, look, NQ wise, that's really just a smidgen, 10 points, you know, in a heartbeat. Uh, so price is trading up at resistance. A close above 76.33, 75 says. Okay, I'm bullish because it was a bearish structured box. Above the weekly, says it wants higher price. It is not above the monthly. The top of the monthly is 77.78. That's where resistance would be. The quarterly says we're above resistance out there. Of course, the quarter hasn't ended. It won't until June. Nonetheless, price is dealing with a resistance level successfully out here. So what's the real message here? Assuming there's no bearish reversal candle come Monday. The message is a close today above 76.33.75 says that price wants to go trade up to 77.78. That is your NQ. If we go take a look at the Dow equity futures contracts and we go take a look at daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly out here, what the daily shows us is that price is trying to make its way up to the 26. 509 level. That's the top of the profile out there. The weekly chart says I'm above resistance, closed above it last week, pulled back tested resistance, closed back above it this week. Even though it hasn't taken out last week's high, the message from a profile standpoint would be bullish out here. If you take a look at the monthly time frame, the month obviously has not ended, but you are trading above resistance at 25,928. That just says, I want to go test resistance. Resistance for it is going to be above its all time high. It just taken a little trend line off of the January high of 2018, the October high in 2018, and that would set us up this month in the 27,160-ish type area. The quarterly time frame is above the top of its box as well, 25,855. I can't do the Russell 2000. Well, I can, but what we're going to get is because of the symbol change out here, I'm not going to be able to provide you with monthly and quarterly data. Uh, but if we take a look at the daily, it's above the top, and I'm using Stevie's um, synthetic composite a contract out here. And uh, so this says, hey, it's above resistance, top of the box. Weekly is above it. But if we switch over to the June contract, which I think is okay, and on the June contract, what this is going to show is a different set of profiles. Now, the daily is the same. So you're above the daily. That says it's bullish. Bullish meaning what? Meaning that price should target 1607.40. In essence, it's all time high out there. That is the message of the Russell 2000. So I hope that that helps uh, everybody out um, with regard to what the markets are doing on a daily, weekly, even longer term time frame so that you can anticipate what the market's next move is. In summary, I would say we just want to really pay attention to Sunday's activity to help assist us as to whether or not there's been any kind of change in trend out there.
Now, we had a request to go take a look at the, and Mr. Bill says, uh, can we look at the sectors and see which are participating in an up market this way, especially the XLF? So let's start with the XLF. Let's just do it kind of like a simple, simpleton way out here. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just look at, well, a couple different things, really short-term trends out here. That's what the diagonal lines are going to show you. And interestingly enough, it's not like a computer. My system drew this in, by the way. I didn't draw this line. But what it's doing, Mill, Bill, Mill or Bill, or both of you out there, is taking the high from March 1st as well as the high from March 19th. And uh, must be a coincidence that the high today hit that trend line and it has backed off. Is that bearish? No, it's not bearish. You've got 51 million shares that have traded thus far. It's 126. Uh, March 19th is the uh, high that it's uh, taking out. One of them that only had 45 million shares. It's trading into December 3rd that has 65 million shares. It's got volume there. XLF, if it can clear that trend line, Bill, I'd write that in, says it wants to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at the XLK, some of the other sectors as well. XLK, which XLF looks pretty strong. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at some of the uh, or the sectors of the S&P 500. Actually, I'm going to switch to the weekly time frame. It provides you with an idea of you know how the week is done out here. I can switch to the daily as well. In the case of the XLK, a light volume week as it takes on its uh, swing point. It's all time swing point high. It's actually taken. It's taken it over. It's trading above the level which was 76.27 out there 7627 uh, yep that's the number now there was 83 million shares a week of october 1st uh yeah it's a weekly chart you're only at 41 million shares uh looks to me like where price is headed to bill uh i would just take the trend line from the highs of august 27th and uh, october the first out there now october 1st was a key reversal session so closing above that is a real positive if we take a look at even even on light volume so what it is what it is. Now, if we look at the daily time frame, and we kind of use those same trend lines, so to speak, out here, you can see a little bit of resistance, perhaps, as it moves a bit higher. But the weekly message, albeit on light volume, looks pretty good. The XLV is one of those sectors, I believe, that has not participated well this week. It's one of the top three sectors out here. Uh, we can see how this is traded lower, and you can see a trend line uh, to the downside. And uh, what this would suggest to you and I, this is a weekly time frame chart that we're looking at, but the profile bill that uh, Price ran into was a bearish structure daily profile, the blue horizontal lines out there. And 92.49, which was last week's high, that in essence rejected Price. This would suggest to you and I that where the XLV is headed to next, not necessarily the final destination, would be 89.11. You're at 90.11, so at least another dollar to the downside. Uh, below that is going to open up the weekly profiles. This is the weekly time frame we're looking at. And I would say 88.27, 82.14. Now let's just put this on the daily time frame out here, see if there's anything else that shows up. Um, and the only thing else that shows up, so if price is going to be moving lower, you know, might want to watch the trading day of March 8th. 11 million shares today, 6 million shares. It hasn't tested that area yet. But it looks like that's where it's destined. That was also right around the daily bottom of its profile. That was 89.11 out there. That was the XLV. Let's go take a look at the XLC out there. Often overlooked, but shouldn't be because it is one of the sectors inside of the S&P 500. Uh, names inside here, Facebook and many others, kind of the social media space, so to speak. But it is, the, I believe, the fourth weighted um, sector of the S&P 500. So why is everybody ignoring it? I don't know. But if we do take a look at its weekly performance, uh, Bill, looks good to me. It's trading above the top of the daily box out there at 48.36. So this too wants to move higher. Now 49.15 is truly the center of the box out there. We'll see if it struggles to get over that area, that's where both buyers and sellers, from a weekly perspective, are comfortable with price. If it can't get over that, 5013 is the uh, projected move there, the top of that uh, weekly box out here. I don't see anything wrong on the uh, daily time frame. Price is above all resistance, so to speak, short-term resistance, that is. Texas T, the XLC looks uh, rather bullish to me as well. Let's go take a look at that energy sector. That is XLE. Let's start off by looking at the weekly time frame. We'll see what its message is out here. A weekly time frame shows that prices above last week. What also shows, Bill, is that it's above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. That number is 67.22, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. Price right now is above the top of the weekly box. That was 67.67. You're at 67.88. Closing above 67.67 says it wants higher price. Now, if we go calculate higher price out here on the weekly basis, um, 40 million. Well, that you could you could draw in an A to B equals CD. You could draw in a confirmed A to B equals CD. Not much of a pullback out here. That pullback looks like uh, well, it was 27 percent. Takes you back to its all-time highs. That would be the energy sector. I'm not going to make that call. I don't like a A to B equal. It's not that. I don't like it, um, but when I say I don't like, I'd like to at least see about a 38% retracement out there, but neither here nor there. If you want to understand what the XLE, the signal here is, it's pretty simple. It's bullish daily and weekly, depending upon where today's close is. 
out there. So that's the energy sector. If we go take a look at uh, consumer discretionary XLP. Now XLP has kind of been an underperformer uh, inside of the market, although on a week and, and actually on a weekly basis, it's also an underperformer. And um, uh, if we take a look, it's really an inside week, so to speak. However, what price is doing right now, it's trading above the top of the daily profile at 55.95. It is also trading above the top of the weekly profile. Uh, that weekly profile was 55.79. So watch those two numbers, Bill. A close above that says it wants higher price. That was the consumer discretionary sector. Let's go take a look at the XLI. Again, a weekly time frame is where we're starting off. This is our industrial sector. Uh, not yet trading above last week's high, running right in essence into resistance by a penny or so. The top of the box, 77.13, we're at 77.15. Closing above it says higher price. You can see the diagonal trend line that would give you a target in the $78 and change area. That's the weekly time frame chart. I don't know that we need to switch to daily. We will. Um, the daily is not going to give us, generate any Larger signal. Watch 77, uh, 15, uh, 77 13, the top of the weekly profile there, Bill, to provide you with any additional information come the end of the trading session today. We got the material sector, the XLB. The XLB slightly almost looks like the XLI. Uh, what it doesn't uh, look like, though, uh, the differentiation is that price is trading above a bear structured box. That knocking on the door form today. Nah, it couldn't be today. Maybe was it today? Could be today. Let me see. Was it today? Let me just switch over on the daily time frame chart, see if that is the uh, case out there. No, it wasn't the case. I didn't think it was the case. It was from something that formed three days ago. Nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. And in essence, that's what you've got with regard to the XLB. So it wants higher price. If you're asking me where, I'm going to say 58.92 as its next move out there. That is the... Um, that is the material sector for the S&P 500. Just two to go. Uh, util, til, I take that back. Just three to go out here. Uh, if you take a look at the utility sector, not much happening out here. Just trading with inside the daily profile from the top at 58.33 to the bottom at 57.41. So not much else there really to talk about. Let's go take a look at the real estate sector, XLRE, see what it is doing. Weekly time frame, it has intercession made a higher high. Here's the deal. It's trading above the daily and the weekly time frame out here. So this looks pretty bullish. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Um, the daily chart uh, would suggest, you know, prices inching up on a trend line in the 37-ish dollar area. And let's go ahead and finish it off. We were able to do this during that segment. XLY. Is it the XLY? That's the last one that we've got to do out here. XLY on a weekly time frame. Let's put that up. You're making a higher high. You are above last week's high out here. You're above daily. You're above weekly. It simply wants to add higher. Mr. Bill, does that help you out? Is that the info you were looking for? And everyone else out there, this is Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back, we'll go take a look at who sent in email requests. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the first uh, email question coming in from Earl. Earl says, hey, Steve, hey, Earl, TLT continues to pull back. Is this becoming a trend? Earl, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the 30-year T-bond out here. And uh, I'll show you the area really to watch. So right now, the low is 146.31. I'm it's trading. The, the low is uh, 146.30, one tick below that. Now, 146, say, right around 146.28. Um, what we're going to see out here is price test the weekly Stevie Green line. I've got it as a dashed level. If price closes below that, doesn't have to be today, it could be Sunday, Monday, is moving below that, then a key level of support on a weekly basis, you you and I just looked at look look the look. We just looked at both weekly and daily time frame charts out here. So uh, watch that level. If there's a close below that, then uh, when you say, is this a trend, I would say there is more movement to the downside likely should that occur. Now, where could price take us to? We've gotten, I'm using my synthetic contract out here because, because of the role and having more data. Its profiles will look different than the June contract. The weekly profiles would take you to 145.21 and 144.07. The A to B equals CD to the downside would take you to 14, and we are trading below the B point right now. So we're trading below the B point. That was from the week of April, the 5th out here. This would say there's an A to B equals CD that is in play. But because we know where Stevie's weekly green line is, I would not suggest that you go take the TBT right now as an example uh, because you want the market to prove to you that it's going to go ahead and do nothing other than just test support on a weekly basis out here. If that fails, as I say, then you can take a look at the TBT with a price projection in the 30-year down into the 144.91, 143.92-ish area out there. So Earl, the pearl, I hope that helps you out with regard to what uh, the charts are telling you and I that the 30-year Treasury is doing. Next question is coming in from uh, Mike from uh, Merrimack, New Hampshire. Mike says, I bought ECA. Let's come out here and put ECA. Is that Incana? Yeah, it is Incana. Uh, it's been a long time since I have looked at uh, Incana. But Mike goes on to say, I bought ECA on April 5th at 7 bucks. It's trading at 750 So nice trade there. Uh, trading pattern was to sell at 761 
Okay. Well, it was at 761. The actual high today is 757 out there. What do you see today? What's the average true range? Well, you're not asking a whole lot, are you? But uh, And you're not. You're just asking, what's the average true range? So I will tell you that the average true range for the last 10 days is 29 cents out there. That answers question number one. Um, where do you recommend I put the stop at this juncture? Okay. So here's what the let's let's do a couple of things out here. Let's look at the bar that price is trading into on a daily basis. It's really your resistance, so to speak, March 19th. 23 million shares out there. You're up with 28. You're pushing into a swing point today with volume. The high there is 765. So I sort of understand where your 761 is coming to, and you're pushing in with volume, which it may take out. I don't know if it will or it won't. So you're asking about a stop out here. And it sounds like you got in at 705. And you're just, I'm just trying to read your mind out here, which is a terrible thing to do. But because of what you're asking me, you're in at 705 looking for 761. Why don't you stay with the trade? Really? Now it's pushing in the swing point. It should, I'll tell you what it should do, is at least go test the 765 level. Maybe it's going to take it out. I don't know. I don't, you know, total, uh, 781 is the top of the weekly box out here. So there's some more resistance. 871, if you can get above 781, would be a good thing. Price is trading above the top of the daily profile right now, but it's equally distributed, 747. Um, but volume is pushing higher. Weekly, what is volume doing? You've got 135 million shares pushing to 139. All that looks pretty good, but it, that just means it's going to go test that high, which never got to the top of the box, the weekly box, that is. And no guarantee that this time it's going to either. So... I give you the data, 29 cents. Your stop needs to be 29 cents below where it's trading at a minimum. Really more than 29 cents, 29 cents times 1.272 at least. It's a Fibonacci expansion. But then you'd be giving back all of your profits, so you don't want to do this. I think you had a trading plan. You know, are we going to fight over a few pennies? Not that we're fighting, but you know what I mean out here. So best information? What it's telling you right now, hey, you're above daily resistance. You're pushing a swing point with volume. Says it wants to make a few pennies higher. Uh, is that worth the uh, risk to you? That I don't know. Thanks for writing in. Let's take a look at Tim M. Tim writes in and says, uh, can you check to see if the foreign market, if foreign money is still coming into the U.S.? I don't even have to look. I can tell you. The answer is unequivocally yes. In huge, giganto ways out here. So, Tim. The global flow of capital is parked and having a blast here in the good old U.S. of A. That is going to continue. Quite frankly, it has been that global flow of capital that has taken us from the lows in December all the way back up to the highs of October of last year. Yeah, it has. If we take a look at right now, um, let's not look at this chart, but just simply come and take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract priced in both euros and in dollars. We made a new all-time high. This is a monthly chart, new all-time high last week. That bodes well for the Dow in dollars, eventually making a new all-time high. We're still in a consolidation, really, quite frankly, in both. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, and even in December, just to show you the global flow of capital, who was buying first, the swing point. I'll put an arrow here. Let me just put two arrows for Tim and for, but let's use blue. Here's the, here's the calendar. Here's the February lows that formed in both the Dow priced in dollars. Whoops, I guess I have to choose the arrow key out here. Both in dollars. I'm going to move my cursors away from it. You can see the month. So it's those blue arrows where both the Dow in dollars and Dow in euros bottom, right? Now, in December, the Dow price in dollars Pushed through that area, closed above it by the end of the um, by the end of the month. That told us that the consolidation was still in place. But back in December, price never pushed through it. It just came back to test it, and from there, you had the European money, probably UK money too, just simply piling on in, saying thank you very much, um, Latka, right from Taxi. Great sitcom. I, w I wish I could say how he would say thank you very much. Uh, I didn't really say thank you very much, right? But you kind of know what I mean. In any event, Tim, the answer to your question is yes. 
the global flow of capital continues to pile into the U.S. and it will continue to pile in to the U.S. Just think of it like this: Brexit's been pushed off until for another until October or something. You're sitting over there in the U.K. Now we're not looking at the Dow, granted in uh, pounds out here, but it, it's it's all really kind of referring to Europe. You're just looking at this, and you know Mario Draghi's got issues. You know that there's issues over in Paris. They're just so under, really, in all of France. They're so underreported here. I have friends. I have friends, just a few of them, over in uh, over in France, and they say there's the, you know, the, the Yellow Vest movement is alive and well and kicking. Won't stop ticking. That was time. Steve Rhodes with TFNM.com. We'll be back. We'll answer Pradeep's question about TZA. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Six S and P sixteen. Russell two thousand is up uh, about three tenths of a percent. That would be about five points. So kind of the weakest of of them out here. Pradeep is asking if he should close out a losing trade in TZA. Now I don't know the full extent of your trade. Whether you have the proper position size. Uh, whether you just risked one percent on the trade. So you've got stops in place on this or not. Um, assuming that you do. Uh, then um, then let's go take a look at the message of the markets and what I would be watching come the end of the day's session out here. 
and that's a and that is the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. Um, I'll, I'll put up the Russell itself. They're kind of doing this. Here's the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. My apology. The high from the day of April 8th is 1588.30. You're at 1588.10. That's a resistance level. It's not one that most people would have been able to have identified. But if price closes below that, <coughs> then Pradeep, you know that at least resistance held and would logically say, hey, you've got the proper position size. It was a trade that you put on. And I could justify staying with the trade at that stage. With regard to the Russell 2000 cash indice out here, uh, the number to be looking at here, and it's going to be from the trading day. I've, this has got green arrow, green lines instead of the blue out here. Is the same day, April the 8th, and the high there is 1588.30. Your 1588, even Stephen out here. If you get a close above that, you know a key level of resistance will have been broken. And then you're going to have to make the decision whether or not you want to uh, um, take the risk because resistance has failed out there. That's the best that I can share with you. Are there reasons to stay in uh, inside the Russell 2000? Potentially, the five-hour time frame chart that finishes here at 2 o'clock. You've got price moving higher, doing less relative energy, and a dark cloud cover. But you can see price sitting right on Stevie's green line. So that's not really a conviction move to the downside, at least not just yet. That was a five-hour time frame. So, Pradeep, best of luck. I hope that info helps you out. And I hope all the info helps everyone out there. Thanks so much for being here today, folks, and the, during the week. Stay tuned. David White's up next. I'll be back with you on Magical Monday. Have a terrific weekend. Take care.